Hello. And welcome to Here's the Thing with Robbie and Jose, where we explore relationships through a male and female perspective. With me, as always, is the lovely Robbie. Hello, Jose. Hey, How hey. are you? How's it going? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> good, good. It's good to see you again. Yes. Thank you again for doing this. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so today we're going to um, uh, continue a series that we're doing, Love is Blind. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to be season two, episode three. Yeah. Right? So still. And and by the way, you know, again, it, it's this whole show, I think, probably takes place in like maybe a month or two. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot yeah, it's of fast. stuff. Yeah. And they, they jammed quite a bit into a, into these shows. Yeah. But just real quick for anybody that doesn't know the premise is that uh, Love is Blind. So what they do is they pair couples and they date without actually seeing one another. Mm-hmm. They're in uh, pods. And the whole premise is that whether or not they can develop an emotional connection, um, even though they haven't seen each other, right? Mm-hmm. So they're taking the visual part yeah. out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So in this one, in uh, episode uh, three, it's kind of a mix, right? It's the engagement slash um, honeymoon, mm-hmm. if you will. Can I just say this was a very emotional episode? <laughs> like this was a hard, this was a hard one. <laughs> episode three yes it will because it's the engagement right yeah. and, and you have to think they're they're taking the plunge they're engaged uh, or they're proposing to people and engaged with somebody that they've never seen before yeah but there was a lot of heartache too i mean it was there was a lot of sad hurt yes. feelings yes for sure very much so but let's go ahead and start it out just with uh you know we, we might go chronologically and we might bounce around a little mm-hmm. bit so but um but i do want to start out with how it started, mm. uh, right? So this episode started with Shayna basically um, telling Shane just exactly how she feels, yeah. right? She's found out that uh, Natalie is his number one mm-hmm. or his girlfriend or whatever, and she feels a certain kind of way. Yeah. Now, this is my issue with, with Shayna, if anything, right? Or it's not even an issue, but she sometimes has opportunities and doesn't take them when she needs it. Yeah. (laughs) She's not very much of a risk taker, it seems. But, you know, it is hard to put your, you know, heart out there and, and, you know, someone was, and then I will say about Shane that I don't really agree with everything Shane has done thus far. However, I think that he handled that really well in the sense of like, when she said like, Hey, this is how I feel. He wasn't trying to entertain it. He, pretty much told her point blank, like, no, I've chosen Natalie. Yeah. I'm sorry. And yeah. that's really cool because I feel like a lot of guys, yeah. you know how you guys are. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you're in a relationship and let's say like someone maybe from your past comes back and says like, I still love you. I don't know. I feel like guys, you guys seem to want to stroke your ego a little too much and you kind of maybe entertain it a little bit just to make yourself feel good. Am I wrong? As, as far as when somebody professes their, their feelings. Yeah, I mean, them. like if you're with someone and someone from your past, let's say, and you're, you know, kind of still interested in them, maybe they come to you and say, Jose, I still love you, blah, blah, blah. I, I, maybe not you, but guys, I feel, it feels oh, good. Okay, so, tell me. Well, <laughs> they may still love you. I don't, Once they get rid of me, that's it. But. <laughs> <laughs> they forget your name, everything. Jose, who? <laughs> but I mean, but, like guys yeah. need to stroke their ego and I feel like, Shane did something that not a typical guy would do. I mean, well, you know, yeah, he, he did that, but also because he knows he's already made a decision, he needs to move forward, right? And so sometimes you have to pick a lane. Yeah. You, it would be nice to have options. <laughs> Who doesn't? And if this was stretched out to like, I don't know, like three months, six months, no, who knows? Things yeah. might have changed, right? But I did come across a quote, uh, and I don't know who or who said it or whatever, But it resonated with me, especially after watching this particular episode. And it Mm -hmm. says, uh, the longer you hide your feelings for someone, the harder you fall for that person. Mm. And I feel that Shana did that. She was playing coy, Mm -hmm. too coy. And Shane didn't know how to take that. So he just assumed, okay, you know what? Yeah, she's flirty. She's being fun. But maybe she's not really serious about this. So Natalie was. Natalie was a very, you know. And so what I I mean by that in, in dating in general. If you're dating multiple people and one of them is really looks like they're serious and you're in in that space too, like I want to be serious and and you feel like it's being reciprocated, you're probably going to go with that person as opposed to somebody that's 
kind of wishy-washy. Well, maybe the reason why Shane is like that, let's say in her past, let's say that she was forward with her feelings and that other person was like, no, you know what I mean? That can be really uh, oh, yeah. embarrassing. Oh, so like, God. maybe there's a reason why she was being very coy about it yeah, based yeah, on but, her past. But, in, and that's, that's been my whole theory about Shana. Yeah. My whole theory about Shana is that she seems to want to hide her um, intent and mm-hmm. hide who she really is because I think she feels that people will be turned off by it. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. Most of us do that, right? Because you don't want to know everything and you have to do it in doses too. At well, least you know, me. there's a stereotype of like guys say that girls are really needy. So like, does it come across as needy if a girl's like, this is how I feel and tells you all the time, like all this reassurance, like Shane needs, does that come across as needy to men though? No, I don't know that it, well, okay. So it's two separate things, right? Shane does need a lot of words of affirmation. Yeah. He does need that. But no, what I'm talking about is sometimes you need to put your cards on the table yeah. and not play it close to the chest, right? Because yeah. when you do that, the the gamble is it's like somebody else might, yeah. you know, put their cards on the table and they're going to go with that yeah. person. Because if I don't know where you stand, how am I supposed to move forward with you? Because then it puts, Shane, it, it puts him in a situation He doesn't want to do it either, right? But did he ever ask her, like, what is it you feel about me? Did he ever ask her point blank and she still tried to play it off? Or did that never come up? Because their their conversations were very flirty. They didn't seem, you know, deep at all. So, like. And that's the problem right there. Natalie, for, for whatever, she actually was basically, when they had their conversations, she was kind of putting it out there. Like, this is what I'm about. This is what I like. And the conversations were a little deeper. And Shayna wasn't. So again, in a, you know, let's, if we were to do this within like three months or six months and he was dating both of them, who knows where things, you know, right. what would have turned out. But because it's condensed, right. they don't have a lot of time to play coy. Like yeah. you kind of almost have to go into it saying, okay, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm like, you know, and, and really this, this is why the show is so fabulous for me is that you can do that. And because there's no visual, they're either going to say like, yeah, that's my jam or no, it's not my yeah, jam. You're I not as vulnerable it. as if you were doing that face to face and being rejected. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially if you really like somebody, yeah. which in this, in this case, right, because after they get engaged, they actually meet one another. So yeah. now you're seeing them. So now you're very self-conscious because now you know what they look like and so forth. Yeah. But in the pods, you're, it's supposed to eliminate all yeah. that. So it's purely, this is your personality. And this is the other person's personality. Go for it. I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, if if I had been in a situation where I basically confessed my love to someone and it wasn't reciprocated, that would probably scar me enough personally that I may not be as forward with my feelings because it's just, I don't know. I don't know her past, but I mean, Natalie, obviously, she didn't feel embarrassed about it and she was consistent with her feelings for, for Shane, so... Yeah, but sometimes sometimes you gotta you gotta take a shot. Anywho, but nevertheless, she um, went on and Shane did the right thing and said, mm. "No, look, good I'm, for I'm, him." Yeah, <laughs> like I'm really feeling Natalie. I'm gonna move forward with her and like, and he even told her, "It's why didn't you do this while we were talking?" Yeah, like we're now we're at a time where we need to make a decision, and now you're telling me this like yeah. it's it's a little bit too late, right? Right, and especially when you're and here's the other. Um, this is what I'm saying, right? So if Shane is in there, because the whole premise of the show is that can you marry and be with somebody that you've never seen, right? Mm -hmm. And they condense it so everybody knows that there's a certain timeline. Right. You can't be so superficial and then think that you're going to make a strong connection. You know what I mean? That's a very casual dating and there's nothing wrong with that. Shana, again, and I, I... I know it's somewhat of a game mm. <laughs> that people play in the dating world. Like, do I give too much of? Do yeah. I give a little bit? So forth. And, and don't get me wrong. There's it's like, don't call her for three days. <laughs> that whole thing. Like, <laughs> yes. And by the time you call her, she's already dating somebody else. Yeah, so like, like oh, man, there you dude, go. you waited three days exactly. to call me. I thought you weren't interested. Exactly. People don't play those games. They it's don't some, work out. Well, the, the, the timing. It's all about timing. Yeah. Sometimes it's okay to jump right in there, and sometimes you, you ease it, but. I think to a certain point, you should at least some make somewhat of your uh, intentions known. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to do. And, and here's the other thing about dating, too, is that when you make your intentions known, keep in mind, you can change your mind. Right? <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I'm dating somebody and I start out with saying, hey, I really just I'm looking for a casual thing. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Three months later, 
things might change and I might yeah. be like, hey, you know, I know I said I wanted to be casual, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really liking you a lot more than I thought. And I really want to see if we can become more serious. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. So but you should at least at least at that moment say here, this is where I'm at. Yeah. And that way the other person. But you're right. It's a gamble. Yeah. And people don't like to do it because it's uh, it's it's scary. And yeah. and even with that. Right. So so after that, then that's when people start uh, basically proposing to one another. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. So we won't go into all of it. But Shane does propose to Natalie. Mm-hmm. Natalie accepts and Aww, she's so super happy. duper happy. Right. And then we come to um, one of the love triangles. Right. So well, kind of. So we go to Jarrett and Mallory, mm. okay? So, and before we get to Jarrett and Mallory beforehand, because it's something I want to talk about, um, is the fact that Salvador and Jarrett, right? Salvador yeah. and Jarrett, they're both courting or they're really, really, their number one is really Mallory. Mm-hmm. So they both have the number one. They both kind of know it. They have a conversation about She's it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, that's shocking. It's so. <laughs> it's not that shocking, though. It That's really how is. guys talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if there was ever a situation where two guys were going after the same woman, yeah, for sure. I remember growing up. I remember when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and I was never part of these things. But I do remember uh, a buddy of mine. He used to date quite a bit. He was when he was younger. He was, he was super handsome. Blah blah, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And he would have girlfriends and this, that, and the other. And it always, and I don't know why. But some of our friends would end up dating his exes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The poor guy. Um, and we would have. They don't care that they're dating his leftovers? Well. <laughs> Isn't that something you guys that's, tease each other? That's, with? Yeah. That's, you know, well, that wasn't really the point. Because uh, I remember we, they did have like a um, come to Jesus kind of moment. Oh. And we were all just hanging out. And he did kind of bring it up. It's like, hey, man why do you insist on dating my exes Ooh, kind of thing, right? Okay. And then I can't remember how the conversation went through, but they did kind of hash it out and they talked it over and then that was it. I mean, they were st- we're st- they're still good buddies to this day. What was the reason that the other person gave? I can't remember what he said, but I remember I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> and I kind of wish I wasn't part of, I wasn't there when it happened, but uh, but I was in, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, what can you say? They're, you're attracted to what you're attracted to. And it's, you know. Yeah. I mean, if your buddy's dating somebody and it's it's kind of like that person's around. So you're going to see them consistently yeah. rather than, you know what I mean? So like, I get it how that happens. Maybe. And here, here's what might be happening, right? This is what I think is happening, right? I think men in general like to compete. Mm. I think we just love to compete. I'm sure women do too, and we'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> men love to compete, right? Whether it's it's sports or trivia, whatever. We mm. just love. And I think they kind of take it by the same approach. It's like, it's not hard feelings, but mm. we're both after the same thing. Yeah. And let the best man win, so to speak, right? Now, <laughs> that's <laughs> That said, maybe that's why. And I don't know how women do it. I know women are, you know, they're athletes too, and they compete too. But I don't think that they kind of take the same approach if they were both after the same guy. I don't know. Or I don't know. Let's, let's put it this way. I don't think that the two females would actually talk about it. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, women are way more catty than that. I don't. That, and that's what's shocking about their conversation, Jarrett and Sal, because it's like that doesn't. I mean, I'm not. OK, I can't say it never happens. But it typically doesn't happen. We would avoid each other or you get into some like really catty stuff. That's, yeah. I mean. I mean, but but they they seem to be, and, and I will say this other thing too, is those two in particular, Jared and Salvador, seem to be more, um, I don't know what's the word, in touch with their feelings kind of thing. Yeah. Like they're very gentlemanly, like, yeah. right? They seem very like, advanced in their emotions. Well, yeah. And I, I, I don't know if that conversation could be had with Shane and either one of those, because I don't know that um, Shane would have the same kind of um, approach to it. And I don't know, obviously, but yeah. I'm just saying his personality, I don't know if he would be okay with, with being like, Hey, I'm in competition with, with another dude and I'm talking to him about it. Yeah. I don't know. It don't doesn't know. feel like it. So yeah. I agree with you on that approach. Um, yeah. Obviously they both know, and they're still having that conversation. Yeah. So they're both, you know, big enough to be able to have that, but, but nevertheless, so they're both after Mallory, Jarrett, <laughs> he does this thing. So there he's in the pod with Mallory mm. and he does that thing that guys do 
to um, kind of feel the water out, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Kind of just to make sure. Put so he does. <laughs> yes. How's the temperature in yes. here? <laughs> and honestly, I get it because you do it in such a way where you have an out so you don't look yeah. bad. But at the same time, I kind of. Like, oh, I was talking about somebody yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it was what he what he does is he kind of tells Mallory, if if I were to propose, mm-hmm. if in this alternate universe mm-hmm. I was to propose, mm-hmm. just just throwing that out there. We're playing hypotheticals here. Yeah. What would you say? That's what I meant by that, right? And sometimes I kind of feel like the direct approach is a little bit better, especially yeah. with something like that. And again, I'm 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 one of those guys that you put your cards on the table. Yeah, because I think he would have gotten the same result. She still would have turned him down. You know what I'm saying? So being direct, I mean, you're right. I just think he should have done that. But, I mean, the result would have been the same. I get it. People try to protect their feelings. No, but, I mean, obviously it didn't work out because even though he was trying to put his toe in, he's still devastated. Yeah, I still think that part of it, you should take a, a direct approach. Yeah. I think there's something about that. And in my case, it ended up working out because um, when you do it, regardless of the outcome, they have a certain level of respect for you, I think. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, look, I'm putting my cards on the table. Now, if you tell me no, fair enough. Usually for me, I walk away. I'm done. You know, I have to because I'm not going to. But nevertheless, um, we, uh, my whole thing with that is, is that you, you make your feelings known, right? For anybody that you've ever, you know, if you have feelings for them. And then after that, um, you let them decide, and then whatever happens, if they say no, I walk away, and then they seem to come around a lot of times. <laughs> mm. But I think, too, that it makes you feel good. Like, you're not going to have any regrets. Correct. And so, like, I think even if you get turned down and it's devastating, you're still going to feel better about yourself in the end, and that's yeah. really important. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, you you take your shot. You know me, I'm all about taking my shots and then see what happens after yeah. that. And And mind you, um, just because they don't feel a certain way towards you, then things change. Mm-hmm. Things change, like you know, absence makes the whatever. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> so uh, so Jared does that. He's like, hey, uh, if I were to propose, you know, what would you say? And Mallory's like, yeah, I don't think so. It's and so she basically turns him down. Yeah, he feels really bad about it. He goes back. You know, he starts. Uh, he's really emotional, obviously, and. Uh, all the guys, he goes back to where the guy's quarters and yeah. they're, you know, trying to console him and, and stuff. And he's obviously very emotional. And I totally understand that. And then so is Mallory. So Mallory yeah. gets very emotional. She walks away. And um, this is what's so interesting, right? So Jared was not only courting Mallory, Mallory was his number one, but he was also courting Ayana mm-hmm. as well. Now, the interesting part, and I'm sure they did this in, intentionally. So after Mallory basically rejects Jared's proposal, she goes back. She's emotional, too. She's, she kind of goes into a little corner. Mm-hmm. And Ayana goes over to console her. Yeah. And she basically says, hey, you know, do you want to be alone? Ayana asks Mallory, do you want to be alone? And Mallory's like, yeah, I need to be alone right now. Yeah. But what I, and this is the only part that's, I don't know if it's the irony, is that obviously Ayana doesn't know what happened. Yeah. And I know that because it'll come out here in a little bit, but she doesn't know the situation of why she's emotional. Mm-hmm. But I I was wondering if she would still console her if she knew because Ayana's number one is Jarrett. Yeah. So what Ayana still tried to console Mallory knowing that she had just rejected her number one. Yeah, I don't think so, and I I hate to speculate, but I feel like it's more of we want to find out what's going on. And so I think her going over there to try to console her was more of like, what just happened? I want the details because (laughs) basically this is my number one, and I need to know. It's just more of that because no one else is going to know the gossip because it's only two people in the pod. So, I mean, like I said, I'm speculating on Mm Ayana's part, but most women would probably be like, I want to know what happened. You can't go over there and say, hey, Mallory, what happened with you and my number one? Like, you can't say that. You can't? No. (laughs) Is that that frowned upon? Yeah, you can't make it so obvious that you want to know. But But no, it's it's just interesting. Now, the thing, and I know we're talking about the show, but what's so interesting is that I realized that after he did that, like <laughs> his boys, and this is the other thing about the boys, right? Every time you've been rejected, sometimes if you have those 
uh, friends, they come up to you, they console you. So they're consoling Jared. Mm -hmm. One of the guys, and I can't remember his name, but he was just like, well, you know, you're still kind of dating (laughs) Yana. Like, hey, man, it's not the end. (laughs) It's not. You you know, you got a backup, buddy. (laughs) Some of the guys didn't have anyone. So it's like, you got two ladies. Exactly. It was like, dude, it's not the end of the world. You got a backup. Like, you know, like you're good, you know, like. But anyways, I just love that, that they're being very practical. Is that what like guys say? Like, let's say that you were in a relationship and you got your heart broken and you go to your guy friends. Is that something that they would typically say? Like, hey, man, there's so many other girls that would want to be with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just like you, you know. you're, you're, you're every guy. I, I, you know, and I'm making a, a general statement, but I would venture to say that every guy knows what it's like to be rejected. Mm. I don't know if every woman knows what it's like to be rejected, but I certainly can tell you, every guy knows what it's like to be rejected. Mm. That's that's just the name of the game. <laughs> if you're gonna be a guy, that's that's just part of life. Yeah. And you have to deal with it, right? So they do understand it, and I think sometimes. Um, Men especially try to be more practical about it because they know that he's emotional. So they're just trying to hit it at or hit it or come at it with a uh, practical stance and say, look, dude, it's not the end of the world. You do have somebody else. You have made a connection with other people. Yeah. And, and, you know, you move forward. So, but I thought that was kind of cool. And I didn't realize, but on that same day, he actually, Jared meets with Ayana. Mm. (laughs) That same day. He got over it real quick. <laughs> but no, he said, he was like, I'm really emotional, right? But he still goes in there. Yeah. And he has a conversation with her. and um, Which I think was good. He was honest with Diana. He was. He should have been. Because it's going to come out later, people. When this airs, it's like, we're all going to see it. You're gonna, There's going to be a reunion show, and you're going to have to answer. But you know what I was thinking about that? You know, and again, I know it's for the show and all that. But I wonder if that is, I'm sure it happens in real life, too, where you might be dating two women and one of them is like, yeah, it's been fun, but I don't want to take it any further than this. Or, you know, like, you're cool, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just And not... the other one gets them by default, basically? Yes. Mm, yeah. Would that guy still tell her that? Uh, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just I saying, can't like, imagine well, anyone be like. Well, God. <laughs> It's like, hey, it didn't work out over there. Are you cool with this? No. Well, you know what I mean, though? Because let's say that the other girl also knew that you were dating. Because that happens, too, right? Let's say you're you're, you're you're dating two women casually, and they know this. Both women know this, right? And all of a sudden, you decide to move forward uh, with one of them, and it's going to be more serious. I don't know if that conversation comes up to say like, hey, are you moving forward with me because you want to be with me or or like what happened with the other girl? Yeah, if the other girl said, I don't want to be with you, I would say 99.9% of men would not tell the one that was left over like, oh, yeah, she rejected me. So I guess I'll give it a go with you. I mean, <laughs> like, I can't imagine why anyone. I mean, you know, and that's what that's that's the whole thing. Right. So Ayana takes it bad and she's upset. And mm. as, I mean, I. I I get it, right? Yeah. It's an emotional, and then she comes back, and then eventually she's like, okay, let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, because now she's going to have to deal with that pretty much as forever, right, of yeah. knowing she was well, the okay. backup, basically. So, so here's the thing about that. And here's here's the thing about that. Being the, the, the not chosen immediately, mm. there's nothing wrong with that. I know emotionally, yes. Like a runner-up in the beauty <laughs> No, no, but this, no, logically speaking, it doesn't, right? And I've made the... I've made the analogy before of like going for a job. Mm. So let's say you go for a job, you interview, that's your number one job. Like I want that job. And then you get the call back saying, hey, sorry, we're going with another candidate. Mm. Okay, no harm, no foul. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, you're, you know, keep my resume. If anything else comes along, you know, keep me in mind, blah, blah, blah. And then you move away Mm -hmm. or, you know, you move forward with something else. So then let's say a week or two weeks later, they, the recruiter calls you back up and says, hey, the other person, it didn't go, it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Are you still interested? You're not going to say no, unless yeah. you already have another job. You're going to be like, heck yeah, that's what I always wanted. So then you go for it. Mm-hmm. And so there's nothing wrong with it <laughs> being number two. if Because here's kind of how I take it. People will constantly underestimate you, constantly underestimate you, right? I And, and I'm going to use a sports analogy, so, but, but, you know, Tom Brady is, 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 comes to mind. 
And the reason why, and I'm not trying to mansplain here, mm, okay? I just okay. wanted to let you know. <laughs> but he was number six in the draft for the uh, the Patriots, right? So the Patriots, basically what ended up happening is they had their first go around of picking who they wanted. Mm -hmm. They passed on him. And then it came back again. They passed on him again. They went through three, four, five on the sixth go around. He was always there. They finally said, you know what? Sure. Come on over. <laughs> And he was a backup quarterback for the longest time. Mm -hmm. He has gone on. He is now, I, I don't think there's anybody that can dispute it. He is the greatest quarterback of all time, at least as of right now. Maybe later on there'll be a better one. But it, he was not, he wasn't even number two or three or four. He was number six. So the point being is that they didn't, just because somebody doesn't, is not, uh, you're not their number one, doesn't imply that you're any lesser. Only thing that the only thing that that proves is they didn't see the potential in you, but that's their fault. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt, but don't you think that's a little bit different because that's a job versus someone that su you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with. I feel like that's more important. It's going to hurt you more than just like you get passed over for a job. I mean, I, 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 maybe oh, I'm thinking as a woman, but like, <laughs> I don't think it's the same. <laughs> like, I get where you're going, but like, I don't. I really don't think it's the same. The the rejection that Ayana is going to feel till the end of time, like she's always going to have that in the back of her mind. Right. But I, I, I don't know. I, I still think, and I get where you're coming from, and that's what I'm saying. Like logically it doesn't make sense, but emotionally maybe not. But I would venture to say, and I don't know, I, I would love to take a poll, so if anybody wants to write in, mm. but I would, I would ask people that are married now, mm. did you marry the person that, you know, quote unquote, you thought was your number one. Oh, you better write an anonymous uh, thing. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh... <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> 214 at gmail.com is where you can, where you can write it. But no, I would love, I would love to know that because yeah. I, I would, I, I wonder how many people said, yes, they were, my, and don't get me wrong. You have like, like uh, childhood sweethearts and yeah. they met in high school and sure that was their, their only person that they ever been with okay fair enough like I hope it works out for you but it doesn't always work out yeah. and then later on you marry somebody and then it it works out beautifully and obviously they weren't maybe they weren't your number one but it still worked out there was still enough of an, a connection yeah uh, maybe and here's the other thing what makes it a number one is it because you're physically attracted to them right is it a passion thing or yeah. is it a, an emotional connection is it a um, you know, you guys jive, like, I don't know what the criteria is for people to have a quote unquote number one. Yeah. But the other thing too, like depending on who you ended up with, I feel like some people would also probably try to trick their mind in thinking that like, well, it wouldn't have worked out with that other person anyway, because if you made that decision, a lifelong decision to marry somebody like you know, you need to feel good in that decision. Right. You can't be going through your whole marriage and be like, dang, man, I should have married my sweetheart in high school. Like, well, you know, it would have been so great. And, the, you know, like, you can't be like that. You're just going to make yourself miserable. I Fair enough, fair enough. And <laughs> I, I did have, you know, I had a, a, a girlfriend when I was younger and uh, I, we met in junior high, I think. And then, you know, it went all the way until after I graduated and whatnot. But I can tell you right now, it would have never worked out would have never worked out. Are you out. sure though? Or are you just saying that no, because I'm a hundred percent positive mm. it would have never worked out just because looking, looking at how our, both of our lives ended up and how she was and how I eventually morphed into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you never know because maybe you wouldn't have morphed the same way you are if you were with that person. There's a lot of unknowns though. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I, you know, and, and none of us know what that alternate universe would have yeah. looked like. <laughs> But my only point with that, and, and just coming from a guy that's been underestimated, and I've been underestimated a lot. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've been underestimated. Um, it doesn't mean anything. Like I still, even when people pass on me, whether it's uh, for a romantic relationship or jobs or anything, I never feel any kind of way about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, like just because you didn't pick me doesn't mean that there, I'm any less. Yeah. It just means you didn't pick me. But, you know. You'll find out later on that you made a mistake and I'll just keep on going. Yeah. I think for women, it's more of if I was picked over for a job, like it may be like, man, I really wanted that job, but it wouldn't stick with me forever. But if I was chosen second to a, a man that I loved, 
I think that would sting even long after the relationship <laughs> ended. But why? Because it's it just seems very personal. I don't know how to describe it for women, but it, it would hurt a lot. Why more. would it matter if at the end of the day you ended up with that person? Why would it matter if they you weren't? Because you'll never your really one? know a hundred percent. Because obviously they wouldn't have chosen you. And so it's like you never know if they're with you because they really want to or because they didn't have another option at that time. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's it. That's okay. I, I don't, being a number two doesn't mean that you're out of options. It just means no, that know. they weren't the first. I know, but as a woman, that's. Oh my gosh, that's way too hard. If I was for with, me. if I was married to someone and they out of the blue said like, well, again, we said the guys wouldn't say this, but if he said like over breakfast one morning, oh hey, by the way, um, I wasn't really intending to marry you. I was dating this other girl. I was dating you, and she turned me down. So I kind of just like, well, I did, then I just asked you to marry. that. I would take that with me probably to my grave. Like I would be. Like, that's. But the, but we all do that to a certain point, right? Like when you when you talk about, um, so I was married, right? And I've had you know even since after that, I've had plenty of relationships since then, right? And the conversation always comes up about that. We talk about our exes, mm. and there's times when uh, that first one that I said would never work out, but I still light up talking about her. I enjoyed our time together, and at the time, I did think that we were going to be together forever. That doesn't change the do fact. Do you light up when you talk to your wife about your ex-girlfriend? Well, the, the, <laughs> let me tell I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know if I lit up, but she could obviously tell yeah. that I was had really, Fond really. Memories. Yes, very much so. Whether or not that makes her feel any kind of way, I don't know. Obviously, no, she had she a past wasn't, too. Yeah, but your, your ex-wife wasn't in competition with your childhood girlfriend at the same time. So there's not going to be that hurt feeling. It's not like you chose your wife because there was no one else that was way later yeah. so like it's not the same feeling i'm talking about if you're dating two people <laughs> and one of one girl says like i don't want to be with you anymore and then you just go with the other one by default i mean it's not by default I'm... but it, it 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 just makes your <laughs> okay. it makes your decision a little bit easier let's just put it that way <laughs> okay <laughs> guy logic all right <laughs> all right not, it's not default. i'll let you have it again but. you know I, I don't know if back to tom brady i don't know if tom brady was like hey i want to go with the new england patriots or if he had a different team in mind that he wanted to go to maybe his 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 team that he wanted to go to was the uh the tampa bay tampa bay buccaneers or something mm. but he's like well new england is who got me so i'm gonna go forward and do the best that i can over there yeah that's not where i wanted to go but yeah, I don't think that's the same as relationship. Nah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and maybe not. But anyways, yeah, all right. Women, so. write in and tell us like who you who you agree with. I, I, I just I just don't uh I don't know. Anywho. Um so again they propose and so that doesn't work out. So Mallory is basically holding out for another guy. Mm. It's the reason why she told she turned down Jared is because I'm assuming that her number one, I don't know if she ever put it that way, is Salvador. Mm -hmm. Salvador, that's another guy right there. Salvador, don't get me wrong, he's a he's a phenomenal guy. Like I, I look at that guy and I'm thinking, man, that's he seems to he has this um his facial expression, he always looks sad to me. Poor guy. Oh, he's really? not yeah, he's not a sad guy, <laughs> by the way. He's not sad. But he just maybe it's because he's mild mannered and just mm -hmm. the way his face is, but he always looks like he's like melancholy. <laughs> I don't know if you got that from him. No, I didn't get that him, vibe. But, he just seems very even keel. Just very much so, Super, yeah. like, easy to get along with, yeah. like, non-threatening. I don't, I didn't get the sad part. But yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say, I will say this one other thing, just with, back with, uh, with Jared and Mallory, right? Because the, one of the things that ended up happening is before he proposed, right? So they go into the pod, he actually brought out tacos. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that like, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you're with your girl and you have this like a hard, or maybe you break up. I don't know. You have a hard conversation or a fight and then there's food in front of you. I can't, if I'm having a fight with my boyfriend, husband, whatever, like, I can't eat. 
I mean, and he's like, it, how it do you chop down tacos? tacos? Yeah, like, okay. it ruins tacos for the rest. I would never do that. What are you in supposed to do? Life? Like, put all the stuff on the tortilla, like, as you're crying, like, okay, the cilantro. Well, and unfortunately for Jared, he thought it was going to go a different way for him, right? He's like, I'm going to be enticed We're with gonna some tacos. We're going to celebrate with tacos <laughs> after she says, yes, didn't work out that way. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but that, it's not funny. But yeah, like, that's now that tacos are going to be ruined for you forever because I don't was, think, I don't think Mallory ate him. She went, you know, she went yeah, to cry. Yeah, that would be weird if she. She just started stuffing her face with tacos. I don't know. Maybe she's an emotional eater, but yeah, that's. It's I mean, what happened awkward. to the tacos? I want to know what ended up happening. Did they go to waste? I don't know. That's you... that, that's the sad part. That's the real tragedy. What happened to the tacos? <laughs> I just, I just thought mm, I would never do that because it's gonna <laughs> ruin tacos for me for the rest of my life. I'll just never be able to eat tacos. Oh, like, so every time he sees a taco from now on, he's like, Mallory. You know, people my do number that. One. <laughs> Even if he's eating with Ayana. <laughs> And Ayana's like, hey, babe, have the tacos. No, I'm good. I don't want tacos. She's like, why are you crying into your lettuce? <laughs> oh. But anyways, I just thought that was like, oh, that's that's too bad. But anyways, um, so Salvador um, goes in the pod with Mallory, and he proposes, and she says yes. Mm. And here's the other part, too, <clears throat> that I found somewhat interesting is that – uh, Salvador got on his knee. They can't see each other, by the mm. way. <laughs> he still got on his. <laughs> he still got on one knee, and I just thought maybe it's just a ritual thing, right? Because yeah. it's it's you know because he could have just been sitting down. He could have been on the floor sitting down, squatting. And maybe it's like the her. mentality, though. Like it's it's so ingrained in guys, maybe that you just do that, and maybe it's just a natural reaction, or it's like maybe if you. I mean, because some guys I think did propose just sitting on the couch, like, but like, you know, right after after being intimate, hey, you want to want to get hitched? Yeah. By sure. the way, um, yeah, I, I mean, think that's where most "I love yous" come from too. <laughs> right after the intimacy. But I think it's just ingrained, maybe in certain guys, who are just like that's just what maybe. you do. I don't think people are really thinking about it. I don't know. And plus, I mean, it's too, it's being filmed. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you know you're being watched by, you're going to be watched by millions of people at some point. Yeah, maybe but she if can't. You but had your foot in the air and you were on the couch. Like, maybe it'd be weird. You're cutting your toenails or yeah, something. Yeah, and say, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, you want to get married? Exactly. You're eating tacos. You got some in your mouth, and then you say it. Yeah, I mean, people are still watching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then she had an opportunity to eat the tacos because now they can celebrate with mm-hmm. tacos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was horrible. But she says yes. Um, the other thing was, and this is where um, talk about Shayna and Kyle mm. because that whole thing has just been and this is where this is where I think things go bad right so talking about backups or or seconds or whatever the case may be right if you mm-hmm. want to look at it that way is that obviously Shayna feels very strongly towards Shane mm-hmm. almost too strong towards Shane and what I mean by too strong is that there really isn't room for a number two it's like one and that's it yeah, that's where I think things go wrong. For Jared, I would say it's different because I think Jared really, really has an emotional connection with both of them. Yeah, he just happened to feel slightly stronger towards, or maybe he thought our personalities are just jiving a little bit better. Yeah, but Shayna just cannot get over Shane. I didn't notice the connection between her and Kyle through their conversations. I mean, maybe like as friends, but like I don't know why. And that's the part. That's what I don't disagree with, right? Yeah. If you uh, legitimately, genuinely have a connection with two people, and I mean genuinely, mm-hmm. but if I'm dating two people and one of them, eh, not so much, and the other one I really have strong feelings, and then that one tells me, no, no, I'm not going to go to the other one and right. be like, hey, let's get married. Right. I'm going to continue dating you, sure, but it's probably not going to go anywhere because there's not that that strong connection. And that's what I don't understand because Kyle obviously is head over heels over Shayna. Mm. Shayna, not so much. But 
Kyle proposes. Yeah, why do you think she said yes, not having that final conversation with Shane? She doesn't know, because it could have went different. Let's say that her plan was like, okay, she said yes, and she goes back to Shane, and let's say I confess my love, and maybe Shane would say, okay, I want to be with you, and doesn't propose to Natalie, right? She doesn't know the outcome. So why, I mean... She could have told Kyle, like, I don't know. I need to think about it. I mean, like, I don't know, right? Like, <laughs> like, why did she say yes? Well, in, 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 yeah, I don't know why she said yes when she felt so strongly about another person. Maybe it was I, that the whole I girlfriend don't... thing that bothered her. Like, you know, she was probably upset, like, about that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a bad idea. I think if you really are head over heels over somebody, yeah. do not go and bring somebody else into that yeah. circle of, of, of it's just like a filler it's just something to occupy your time and that's, you know, that's a just, bad idea because it's going to end in tears I know. it always ends in tears but she you know he had obviously he had a, he had proposed and she said yes and you know they move forward and and so forth now then afterwards they meet mm-hmm. and the meeting between everybody that's always <laughs> you know that's always awkward or it could be awkward because you haven't seen them you you know what they sound like and you know their personalities and you know you know you made an emotional connection but you don't know what they look like and yeah it was can I just <laughs> say like the most awkward out of that the kiss between Kyle and Shayna yeah my facial expressions was like ooh yes. like that she was pulled away ooh that was bad she that was pulled away and that really was, awkward yeah I. I I, yeah, but then you know she still acted. I mean, I know she was kind of trying to tell him. Basically, she wasn't sure, but I think she was still being, even at that point, a little too flirty, a little too smiley. I don't know. Yeah. Like, Again, and this is my 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 issue that I have with that is that he gives her another out. Yeah. Kyle basically tells her, like, look, if because because so just to bring it back a little bit, I guess she was saying that religion part he's an atheist Mm -hmm. and she's religious and she's having quote unquote reservations about it because she doesn't know if it's going to work out Mm -hmm. okay fair enough nevertheless kyle says hey do you want to make this do you want to try for this because if you don't now's the time to tell me right Mm -hmm. she doesn't take that opportunity to say what's really on her mind and she moves forward what are your thoughts on that i don't really think that was a clear out i just think women try to be nicer and it's hard for us to turn people down and i don't really think that that was like i think that's a bad idea no i agree i think that's a bad idea because she shouldn't have done that you have an opportunity and and it's time to you know person up (laughs) i would say woman up (laughs) and you know mallory was able to say no you know she was able to say no to jared and you know it was difficult it yeah. was extremely difficult. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, yeah, she was but, crying about it. She it wasn't like a pleasant feeling, but at least now he knows where they stand, and she's able to move forward. Don't you think that it's harder to say that to someone's face, though? I mean, I know it was hard for Mallory to say no, but having to be face to face with someone, it feels different. Yeah, but you're about to embark on a I know on a whole engagement in marriage, probably right because you've already said yes. Yeah. Why would you? Go forward knowing that you're not in it. I know. That's, I, that's, I that's don't a, agree with her, but I don't know. It's it's hard, but I don't. I just don't know why. I wish I could ask her. Like, <laughs> why would you even say yes to Kyle in the first? I don't know why. If you want to be on the show or you want to see where maybe it can go, maybe she was too conflicted at that time. I don't know. I don't. I, let me ask you this: Just have you ever prolonged a relationship knowing that? It's really not going to go anywhere. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> Everybody has their reasons. Do they? I mean, Do they? <laughs> I'm not saying it's the best approach, but I mean, we've all made mistakes. <laughs> oh, my God. No, and there's a difference. There is a difference between not being, um, um, not, uh, what's what's the right word? There's a difference between having trepidation, Mm. right? And still moving forward and legitimately giving it everything that you have. Yeah. Like you can still do that, right? If you feel like, you know what? 
there are certain things that I'm dealing with, but I do really want to give this a shot. I really want to try. Yeah, it's kind of like when you get married, it's like getting married is scary, but it's like if you really love that person, you're just going to have to have faith. you got to take that plunge and be like, okay, I really love this person. I'm right. scared, but we're going to do it. We're going to see right. how it happens. You have to. But and yeah. the, but the other, the other side of that is when you know in your heart it's just not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. Then at that point you deserve or you you owe it to yourself and to that other person to just let them know it's it's I'm sorry. Yeah. And and again, this is this is just me. You can always revisit that at a later time. There's so many when it comes to emotions, when it comes to people, when it comes to um this crazy thing called love. <laughs> <laughs> just because you feel a certain way now doesn't mean that you're gonna feel the same way at a later time. And that goes both ways. You can be just head over heels over a woman, just love her so much. And then you give it five years, give it 10 years. You're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> or, and here's the other side of that coin. You could be like when you first like, yeah, you know, I, I really don't know. And then give it five years, give it 10 years. And you're like, this is the best person like, I can't believe. It's a gamble either way. It you is. Waiting it 10 is. years to right. see if you really want to be exactly. with someone is a My long time. My point being is people's feelings change. People yeah. evolve. And sometimes they can surprise you. And sometimes they could end up being the best partner that you could ever have. And then you're thinking to yourself, just like the Tom Brady, <laughs> like, I can't believe that they weren't my number one. Knowing what I know now, heck yeah, they would have been my number one from the get-go. Because, again, you went six rounds and you you passed on him. Yeah. knowing, But nobody knew that he was going to be the greatest of all time. There's just no way of knowing that. But it's just like knowing now, like, yeah, they would have been the first. <laughs> God, yeah. I picked them up on the get-go. I really think that Shayna, when when Kyle proposed, I think that she hesitated, she made the wrong decision, and then was too embarrassed to back out. That's my opinion could, of what happened. Could be. Um, she felt like maybe she was too deep into it. But, yeah. but I, I would, there's a certain amount of uh, respect that gets lost whenever you... Um, what is it? Uh, what's, what's the word I'm trying to say? When you um, uh, lead people on, mm -hmm. knowing what you know, and you know it's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's not just, fair. Well, it's going to come out sooner or later. Yeah. All, and then what, the problem is it's only going to be worse yeah. later on because now they're that other person is going with it with all their heart. They're in it, and they have no idea mm -hmm. for poor people, right? Because it happens to women and men too, but they have no idea that mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere. Yeah. So their life is going to is shatter at a later time but <laughs> but anyways so they all meet jared and ayana they were all over each other mm -hmm. they look like they've been together forever yeah it was cute yeah mallory and salvador that's another one it was like oh what's what's happening it here it was awkward she said i'm emotionally you know attached to him but the physical isn't quite there yeah and i thought hmm that's interesting because <laughs> because if she's if she feels that way towards him, what chances do guys like us look like? <laughs> the not tall, the not Stop dark it. and handsome. Like, <laughs> like, geez, okay. Your dad, you're not physically attracted to? Like, what, what? Well, I mean, you know, everybody has their taste. I mean, maybe I know, she doesn't like it. the I Latin lover. She doesn't like it. I don't know, but. No, and I get it. That's why I was saying, you know, I know we've had this conversation before. You know, attraction is attraction yeah. and you can't help it. So I don't. I don't judge her or pass any, you know, whatever, whatever you're attracted to, that's what you're attracted to. There's nothing you can do to. But to I will say for a woman, though, if she's emotionally, if we're emotionally attracted to someone, if the physical isn't a hundred percent there, that can progress Yeah. because of the emotional part. So, yeah. I mean, I think that that approach is not the same as Shane, you know, Shana It's like, right. okay, well I'm not super attracted to him, but I really like this person. It could grow into more. So no, I, I totally, yeah. totally agree. Um, so then afterwards, um, you know, they, they, they get engaged. And so now they go off and meet. So they go off to, uh, Mexico, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they're having their, their dates. Um, it was interesting about that, right? Because now they're, they got the visual part. Now they're in person. So they're interacting a lot more. Is Shane, uh, or excuse me, Shane and Natalie, right off the bat, there's trouble in paradise mm. in their communication style, yeah. which is ironic because they should have figured that one out earlier. But that takes a long time in a relationship. It, though. it, it does. And I think, but, but I think what ended up happening is Shane is a little more playful and he wants to be playful and, and he needs words of affirmation quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Natalie seems to be a little more sarcastic 
in in kind of and when you're sarcastic like that, some people don't always, especially when it comes to being cutesy with one another, mm -hmm. um, they don't really. Um, it turns them off, yeah. and he is getting royally confused because he's trying to talk about their like the first night and getting intimate, mm -hmm. and she's kind of shooting them down. But she's obviously really attracted to him because she said that from the get go, yeah. right? So it's it's at least what she's telling people on camera mm -hmm. that like he's so hot, he's amazing, blah blah blah. Well, she's telling him to his face too. She is, but, but whenever he asks her to say stuff yeah. like that, she's not doing it. I think mm -hmm. in one of them, I think she called him like, "Oh, you're ugly" or something like that. Again, she's being playful, but he is not having it. <laughs> I will say for a guy, I mean, don't tell a woman she's ugly to be playful ever, ever, ever. <laughs> like, no. Guys are typically supposed to be able to handle that. But there, there is a communication yeah. and he seems to be frustrated and he doesn't quite understand it because in the pods or whatever, she was being very flirty and, yeah. and like, yeah, and this, that, and the other. Granted, they hadn't seen each other, but now they're together and it, you can tell that he's trying to be a certain way and she's trying to be a certain way and it's not connecting. They're it's just like when not two people have them. different comedic styles. Like I will say, like if I was dating a guy that loved dad jokes, which I don't like, <laughs> Aww, it I would be hard jokes. because it's like you're telling me these dad jokes, and it's like I'm not gonna force myself to laugh. It's like it, the, you know, but I think she, her way of being funny, obviously doesn't jive with him, and mm -mm. so mm -mm. and he's not he's not liking it. Um, you know, uh, the other the other couple that kind of stands out a little bit is um, Kyle and Shayna. Yeah. Again, like I said, she's being so flirty and cutesy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you already know. Why are you doing this? Why are you having this like the charade? I think it's a force of habit, to be honest with you. I guess. I think I think it's a force of habit because that technique, and I'll call it a technique, yeah. or that approach, maybe that's a better oh, technique way. Is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it will, right? It will get you what you want as far as the guy will fall for you. Yeah. Now, the problem is turning it off. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, and this is maybe where it's a little bit where guys are a little bit different. So let's say you're dating a guy, right? And he's extremely charming. Mm -hmm. It's hard to turn it off. So if you're dating that that person and then you're out in a social engagement and he's being charming to everybody, mm -hmm. it could be perceived as, oh, he's just a flirt. And then you might feel a certain kind yeah. of way like, hey, like, why it's are you flirting with her? the thing that you attract her? is to him initially but he has it for everybody exactly. it's just this personality exactly yeah. that's just the way he is but it's going to make you feel a certain kind of way because you're like hey i don't appreciate you being flirty and i was like well i'm really not trying to be yeah. but i am very social and i try to be charming i try to be funny blah blah yeah blah. everybody likes the life of the party person but to be with them in a relationship it can be difficult yeah. you know yeah. and i think about this because i have an uncle Right. I have an uncle and he's um, uh, I guess he's got to be like in his 60s or 70s. And when he was younger, he wasn't like a life of the party. He was kind of, you know, like um, straight laced, you know, and so forth. But as he got older, he actually did become a life of the party. As he got older, he would dance at parties. He would tell mm -hmm. jokes. He would love to recite uh, poetry. It was amazing. Like he was totally, and his wife was very reserved. Mm. And even at that age, right, because he's 60, 70, she still unfortunately kind of felt a certain kind of way about it because she was just like, you know, he's, and I don't know if like women were throwing themselves at him or anything like that, but still she was just like, she was different. And I, I know that she kind of felt like. You know? Well, the other thing too, if he wasn't always like that, she fell in love with him for a certain way. And then we all grow and change, but sometimes you don't really like the change that your partner does. Yeah, and so idea. like if she married him and he was super reserved and like, okay, we're the same. And then he decides to change all of a sudden, it may be hard for that other person to accept it. Yeah, that's true. But you know, like, like I said, you know, but, but it was, um, it was interesting. And they, they obviously worked it out cause they've been married for forever, but but yeah, I think Shayna can't turn it off. Yeah. And it's always very dangerous. I would say it's very dangerous in general because even if you have like coworkers and you're like that, because again, you know, we talked about it before, she tends to mirror people mm -hmm. and it's a great technique. I, you know, if, if, if you want to get along with somebody, mm -hmm. mirror them a couple of times and all of a sudden, you know, they're going to like yeah. you more. Because they're like, hey, you're like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you got to be really careful about that because guys can misinterpret that thinking, oh, she's into me. And it's Which, like, nah, not really. Kyle, <laughs> mm, I feel sorry for Kyle. I really do. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, but but at the same time, I kind of feel like, you know, 
they're adults and he knows that she has reservations and i think that the problem with kyle uh, the the problem that kyle has is he can't see it he just everybody else it's pretty obvious but he just cannot see it he has that hope and he has because do, she's so beautiful well like, well you know salvador has the exact same issue right because mallory kind of alluded to it too so he, salvador knows that Mallory isn't physical. Cause he even says like, yeah, the physical part might come later or the, the, the attraction or whatever. And in that one, I think it has a better chance because they seem to legit, like she really does. And she said, I'm emotionally attacked, yeah. attracted to him. Like they did I have do a strong like connection. him. Right? Mm -hmm. With Shayna again, because she's so flirty and very, um, and I hate to put it this way, but very superficial and it doesn't go into a deep level. It's that connection isn't there. Yeah. So now you kind of have to rely on the physical part because if you don't have that and you don't have the emotional part, you, <laughs> I don't know what else is there. There is like you just do you want to you want to just get the divorce now because it's yeah. not going to work out. It's, yeah. it, especially if one and, and I will say this and I'll, I'll end with this. The other thing is that Kyle saw Shayna and was like, oh, my gosh, she is the most beautiful, gorgeous woman. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when a guy usually does that and he was like, yeah, and look at me and blah, 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 blah. He becomes very uh, self-conscious at that mm. point. And you always got to be really careful when you're self-conscious like that. Because now all of a sudden, you if you elevate the other person too much to the point where they're unattainable, mm. how do you plan on? Because these are the people you're going to be living with, right? They're going to yeah. see you with bad breath. You're going to, you know, like this is a person. You, so you can't feel like, oh, my gosh, she is the goddess and I'm just a peasant down here. <laughs> It won't work out. It yeah. won't. I'm not saying that you shouldn't think that your wife is beautiful or the person you're like, yes, absolutely. But hey, you know, she's a person too. You know, she, yeah. like everybody else, she, she has her flaws and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, we'll, we'll see how that whole thing turns out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was, it was a good conversation. Yeah. I, 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 I cried see a lot came. in this episode. Like I said, it was very emotional. Um, and it was, it was a hard one. Um, like I said, a lot of hurt feelings. There were a lot of good things, but it, I don't know, it felt like there was more heartbreak than, than good. Yeah. And, and mostly, uh, obviously in the Kyle and Shayna, because, uh, they eat dinner together. <laughs> They're in their bathrobes, which I'm sure Kyle, uh, Kyle was thinking, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> she already, she already agreed to marry me and we're in our bathrobes. We're in her room. Yeah. And then of course she comes out and says, Hey, yeah. um, I'm I'm ready to go to bed or whatever. And it's yeah, like I'm seven o'clock. Go to my own room. Yeah, and it's like seven o'clock, and he's like, "Uh, yeah. what?" And then we going we on? end with her carrying her bags, which we assume that means that she's leaving. No, we I don't didn't. we don't know for sure, but it's a pretty good assumption. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe she maybe she was taking her luggage she to her room. Didn't even want to. She didn't even want to get dressed. She just she, left. She got just... on the plane with her rope. <laughs> it's terrible. I shouldn't she laugh about just, it. She just left, and um, yeah, you're like, wow. Uh, again, another sign that maybe this might not work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, good conversation. Um, I really enjoyed it, um, and I hope you did too. I, uh, I did. And if you guys like the show, you know, please, we ask that you tell your friends and family, and we'd love to hear from you guys. You can write in, let us know what you think. It's uh, here's the thing 214 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. And also, you know, if you get a chance, uh, you can rate us. So as you're listening to them, rate us and give us feedback. We love feedback. We're only going to get better the, the more information that we have. But yeah, absolutely. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. All right. Until next time. Bye. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>